I want to go back to two passes that he made. It was a touchdown pass to Nick Vanette. I think it was a little skinny post. And then two plays before that, he hit Jalen on another slant. Are those passes that maybe you guys haven't been able to throw recently around here? I mean, those seem like those are pretty spot on, led the receiver. And it um, one no, I mean, both of those plays we've we've had in the offense and, and made over the last two years um, repeatedly. But, but they were great. I mean, great throws. He uh, he really has a knack for both of those the slants and, dra and and drags and those benders, those skinny posts. He really has a knack for for leading the receiver and, and, and putting it where you know in a tight hole. And, and he did a really good job on both those plays. Steve. Yeah, Coach Steve Hellwagon with uh, Buck Nuts twenty four seven. Uh, Jalen Marshall looks like he's really starting to become more a part of the overall picture here. Mm -hmm. um, just what are the things he's maybe showing you guys? Uh, he caught a pass. Uh, he had the uh, the punt returns. How he's taking that job over? Just what what's yeah. happening with Jalen? I guess. Well, he's a guy we wanted to get more involved. I mean, he's really done a phenomenal job. And coming into the year, we had high expectations. Really coming into his career, there was high expectations, and he's he's really worked hard and, and started to try to live up to those. And, and he uh, he's a guy that over the last five weeks or so has really earned more, I guess, respect and and and, and more playing time and and more touches so so we're trying to find ways to get him more involved because he's a dynamic player that that really is doing a lot of things well right now has a lot of momentum urban, dispatch. Uh, urban talked a little bit about evan spencer and his value mm -hmm. he's not a guy who lights up the stat sheet most, most weeks but can you discuss just what he brings to this team on and off the field yeah he's not a guy that lights up the stat sheet because they keep stats on catches and yards and that's about it um, if you walk in a staff room or turn on the film he lights the film up so opponents know who he is and think he's a really good player, but maybe the the media or or the national news doesn't because they all they care about is touchdowns and catches. He's one of the most phenomenal blockers I've ever seen, and he's really functional and and, and really probably a little bit underutilized in the throw game. I mean, I, he's one of the better players I've ever coached, um, and his respect is as high as it can be around here. So. Um, he was a little more involved this week, and we're trying to get him more and more involved because he's earned that right. But but he's he's as important a guy in, in my room as I have. I mean, he might be the most important. So he's uh, without him, our perimeter run game's not near as good, um, and he's he's starting to get more and more involved in the throw game. And just in general about your receivers, I mean, that group, as you know, has the reputation of being kind of the divas and the prima donnas you know, <laughs> elsewhere. But but here it seems like you guys... Oh, else, not here. Certainly not here. That's <laughs> elsewhere. Everywhere else. But, you know, <laughs> to be, have to be selfless because you do have a bunch of guys rotating. How do you yeah. kind of develop that culture in, in that room? Well, you know, I mean, I think it, it comes from the relationship with each other. I mean, there's not a guy in there that doesn't want to see one of the others do something well and doesn't want to... So, so you know, in order for Mike Thomas to touch the ball, you know, Jalen might not touch it as many times, but but there's a great relationship between the two. So he wants Jalen to touch the ball. He wants Mike to touch it. You know, they all want to do well. And at the end of the day, all they really care about is that we win and we do our job. And so there's probably six guys rotating right now, and all six of them, you know, there may not be a premier marquee guy that, that that's going to have the national stats that put them in whatever top of the country, but that's kind of a – be, that's a testament to the development of those six guys in the group. And, and they're all bought into the fact that whoever's in is going to make the play, and there's confidence in that in my room. Dave Biddle, Bucknuts. Uh, Mike Thomas redshirted last year as a sophomore, which is, that's pretty rare unless a guy's hurt, and now he's your leading receiver. Just mm -hmm. what's, what's the biggest difference, Zach? I asked Coach Herman a similar question last um, year. You know what? I think the red shirt was, was probably the best thing that, that ever happened to him because he came in as a freshman and really probably shouldn't have played quite as early. I mean, he showed flashes like in a spring game and then a couple, couple times showed some things that we, we saw where he could be. And we also just didn't have any depth. And so we came into sophomore year and expected big things, and he really didn't have a great training camp. And, and so that was a decision we made after really the first or second game when he didn't play, and it was to kind of let him have a year to develop into what he is today. And I think the way he handled his business that year and the way his family handled that, biz, that, that year and that decision really made him who he is today. And by, by no means is he a finished product, but his successes this year are because of his mentality with that year of development and not playing. And, and it, it developed a, a drive, a motivation, a hunger within him that I don't know that he would be as good today had he, that not happened. Just a quick follow-up. Um, mm -hmm. any, anybody who's registering this year in the wide receiving core that's standing out, any of the freshmen that's uh, registering that 
think, or, or playing um, on the scout team? Or? Yeah, I mean, it, uh, Terry McLaurin's really doing well. I mean, he's 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 developed over the last six weeks phenomenally, and, and he's he's an exciting player that I'm excited about in the future. And then guys, there's other guys. Paris Campbell's a guy that's kind of been hindered by by injuries, but he's shows flashes. He's going to be really, really good. And then um, that's really it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Zach, going back to JT, uh, mm -hmm. as you watch him from a wide receivers coach's perspective, what are you seeing him doing play to play, looking down the field, et cetera? I mean, his awareness, is it is it past where you thought it would be as a Richard freshman who hadn't played until this year? I mean, just, you know, what, what's your take on that? Yeah, you know what, I've, I've, I've always been really impressed with JT. I mean, from the time he came here, I'll never forget he gave a speech to some recruits. I think it was maybe his second weekend on campus just about why he chose Ohio State and, and, and was kind of telling them about, you know, he, he couldn't imagine being somewhere else and watching us play for a national championship and him sitting there thinking that he let that opportunity slip away. And I'm sitting there, this kid was 17 years old or 18, whatever he was. I was like, wow, that's an impressive 18-year-old. And he's only continued to wow me with his leadership and his maturity since then. And um, so it's not that, not that surprising, but it's rare. It's rare that you have a kid this young that, that kind of has that maturity and has that understanding and has that intangible value, but he definitely has it. And any qualms about him, uh, you know, from your coaching standpoint? Leading this team uh, into in front of 110,000 on Saturday night. I mean, uh, and, and why not? Um, he he's it's kind of that innate leadership quality that the guys want to follow him. Uh, when every pregame he talks to the offense, and every time I'll never forget our first uh, must have been Navy pregame he spoke to the offense, and, and Devin Smith and Evan Spencer looked at me right when he's done. Is like, wow, that's a mature 18 year old or 19 year old, because he's just he's different than most redshirt freshmen. So there's no qualms. There's no, uh, you know, lack of confidence. It's, when, when we're going into, into that stadium on, on a Saturday, we know he's leading us, and, and everyone's confident in that. Uh, Penn State's only giving up 15.2 points a game. I've only given up one red zone passing touchdown this year. Mm -hmm. What do you see when you scout them? Um, you see – a very talented defense that has a very sound scheme and, and, and they execute it well. I mean, the number one rush defense in the country, number six uh, scoring defense in the country. That doesn't happen by accident. But I mean, we're we're not bad on offense either, so it, it'll be a fun a fun uh, experience for us and, and and really a challenge that we're excited about. Just as a guy who knows offensive football, does JT Barrett belong in the Heisman discussion? You know what? I don't know. I don't know the national. You know what what's out there and and really. All I know is he's he belongs as our starting quarterback right now, and we're we're fired up to to have him do that. Last couple, uh, Doug, uh, Doug Lee Maurice, Cleveland .com. Urban talked uh, last year before the season just about the need for the young guys to get developed, to have depth, to add you know that second layer of the team. How did the assistants take that? How did you take that in your room in terms of making sure you had not just a first group, but obviously. Mm -hmm. A second group, multiple guys ready. Um, I, we we kind of went into this year talking about last year and how at the end of the year I felt like my guys kind of wore down a little bit and, and they weren't maybe as fast, as dynamic, and as as productive as they were at the beginning of the year. And I think a lot of that had to do with the number of snaps they were playing. And so I went into this year saying I need six starters. I need three, two at every position. And you, all six are starters. There's not, you know, this guy is ahead of this guy. It is these are six guys. I don't care who's in the game. We're going to roll them. That's a starting wide receiver at Ohio State. And so that's the mentality we had really starting back in January because I think to be productive down the stretch in a no-huddle, up-tempo offense, you need to have that depth. And so that's what we tried to develop, and that's what we aimed to do. And I think so far we've got that done. And, and talking back again about what, what happened with Mike last year in the red shirt, mm -hmm. a, a mid-career red shirt, not for an injury reason, mm -hmm. is there a risk in that? Could you could a kid go south, you know, or, or is that a a move that you're willing to make with almost everybody if it makes sense, or does it have to be a particular situation? Yeah, I mean, I think we're not going to waste a year on 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 a on a kid that that's not going to be productive or worth it, and, and so I, I don't think there was necessarily any risk involved. I mean, we know Mike. I knew the situation, and. and he needed that year. I guess it's case by case, but we're also not going to throw a kid out there, play him 20 snaps, 40 snaps on the year, have one catch, and say, oh, sorry, there goes one year. 
we're going to play you if you're ready to play. If you're not, you're not going to play. If at the end of the year that means that a red shirt is an option, then sure, we'll do it. But it has nothing to do with mid, mid-career, mid, mid-year. It's, it's all based on are you ready to play or not. If you are, you'll play. If you're not, you won't. And at the end of the year, if you have a red shirt, we'll use it. Yeah, Coach Clay Hall, ABC6. Uh, you addressed the receivers' unselfishness. We were asking JT after the game. You have a lot of guys in your ear wanting the ball. He goes, are you kidding? They're wide open on every play. And did you ever have to uh, say to those guys, leave the kid alone, let him settle in, we'll get, you know what I mean? Um, I, I've had a lot of conversations with them about, you know, how to, you know, kind of back up and support your quarterback. But, but I don't think telling the quarterback, hey, I was open, I want the ball, I think that's a positive thing. That's a kid saying, throw me the ball and I got your back. And so I – they, but there's no question. They're always open. They always should have got the ball, could have got the ball, and they'll until you watch the film. Maybe they weren't, but but um, I don't think that's a negative. I think that's a positive. You want a kid that says, "I want the ball. Throw me the ball. I want to touch the ball." Because if you don't, if you got a bunch of kids that don't want the ball, you got major problems.